The National Medical Stores, commonly known as NMS, is a government of Uganda-owned organization mandated to procure, store, and distribute human medication and health-related consumable items to government-owned health centers in all her districts. So in 2020, NMS, in line with her mandate, meticulously pulled off a massive exercise to store and distribute the over 27 million long-lasting insecticide-treated mosquito nets throughout the country under the third universal net coverage campaign. This project was um, negotiated and delivered by ourselves and therefore we have all the reasons as Ugandans to be proud of what we are able to achieve. I want to thank NMS, General Manager, Paul, and the entire team in National Medical Stores. We are so proud of you. We want to thank you that when we agreed to move this way, you are very quick to come on board understand our strategy and to blend in. This video documentary highlights some of the innovations behind the success on the campaign dubbed Under the Net, Chase Malaria Out of Your Life. Uganda has one of the world's best gifts of nature, the climate. It supports an abundant natural resource base, both flora and fauna, which forms part of the rain-fed agriculture, the major source of livelihood for the people all year round. But this climate has a dark side too. It allows stable year-round transmission of malaria, making almost 95% of the country susceptible to the scourge. According to the Uganda Malaria Reduction Strategic Plan, Uganda had the sixth highest number of annual deaths from malaria in Africa, as well as some of the highest reported malaria transmission rates in the world, with approximately 16 million health-related cases and over 10,500 deaths reported at health facilities in 2013 alone. Chances are high that the majority of the undocumented health complications and deaths occurring outside of healthcare settings are also a result of malaria. To counter the worrying scenario that imposes a heavy burden on the Ugandan population, the entire health system and the national economy as a whole, the government made a commitment to 1. Reduce the annual malaria deaths from the 2013 levels to less than 1 per 100,000 people by the year 2020. 2. Reduce malaria morbidity to 80% from the 2013 levels of 150 confirmed malaria cases to 30 out of every 1,000 people by the year 2020. And reduce the malaria parasite prevalence from 45% in 2010 to less than 7% by 2020. This, if achieved, will mean a score of over 85% reduction in malaria parasite prevalence in the country. <laughs> Studying the characteristics of the enemy makes it very easy to exterminate them. And so, guided by the movement patterns and feeding regimes of these mosquitoes, the Ministry of Health prioritized the use of long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets because they are by far the most effective means of preventing malaria. They act as physical barriers to repel and kill mosquitoes while the people are sleeping. Each net costs about 10,000 shillings and protects on average two people for three to four years, yet a basic malaria treatment, if conservatively stated, can cost well over 100,000 shillings besides all other challenges that come with the disease. 
So in 2009, the government of Uganda introduced a strategy to distribute the free long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets to protect her people against contracting malaria. A lot of work has been done in making sure we've been able to reduce the prevalence of malaria and deaths are, um, caused by malaria. It still presents a clear and present danger to very many on the continent. Over the years, um, government of Uganda and her development partners have uh, invested a lot of money in strengthening health systems uh, to make sure that they are resilient and uh, they are robust and they can actually serve the needs of their population. And uh, this time around, the Ministry of Health took a very, very bold step and uh, asked that uh, we execute this uh, project using internal mechanisms that we had in the country. And that is how this whole project ended up um, coming to National Medical Store. The PST was able to convince um, the partners that the capacity was there in country and that we could execute it and not just as good as the foreign companies that were doing the work before, but even a lot better. And that is the benchmark she set for us. And uh, we are here at least today to say that at least Madame PS, we hope you have not disappointed me in that area. The campaign steered under the theme, under the net, chase malaria out of your life, is targeted to reach over 27 million families in different parts of the country. Since her establishment as a statutory corporation in 1993 by an act of parliament, NMS has been able to build tailor-made innovations, strong networks and the capacity to procure, store and distribute medical supplies to the different strategic points in the entire country. So the 2020 Universal Coverage Campaign was well within their scope of work. We are here to celebrate this contribution and this great milestone. The distribution of mosquito nets in Uganda is just one of the interventions from Ministry of Health to try and reduce the deaths and the issues related to malaria. And in this particular intervention, it's for coverage to the entire country. Uh, mosquito nets have been distributed before in this country, and uh, this particular grant for 2019 allowed this country to be able to acquire 27 million nets that were meant to be distributed over six distribution waves. These nets were provided by different partners, including the Global Fund, we had against Malaria Foundation, Presidential Malaria Initiative, and in this case, we were requested as NMS to store the nets and to distribute the mosquito nets around the country and to ensure that there is a proper receipt of the nets at the sub-counties. So the function to celebrate the hard decision taken by the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Health brought together many of the key actors in the 2020 National Malaria Public Health Campaign, including officials from different government ministries, development partners, and the over 200 delivery clerks who were the foot soldiers in the field. Speaker after another recalled the logistical challenges in the past three national malaria campaigns that had been conducted in 2009, 2013 and 2017 respectively, whose results exposed glaring gaps in the government's capacity to handle logistical assignments of that magnitude. We were of course aware that this is a very big logistical operation and we tried to indicate the sheer size of the weight of what we have to handle. Here we are talking about 200 delivery clerks, but altogether we had over 2,000 people employed formally and over 200,000 people working around the, around the country. But NMS did meticulous statistics knowing numbers for every household, every village, every drop of point, size of truck. Huh? The other thing we need to really celebrate is the management information system which you, you put up. 
Doubting stakeholders were informed real time that this truck is leaving, it has reached here. Okay. The previous campaign we lost whole trucks, even the truck itself disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> So from this, we need to learn some things, that we can do things by ourselves. We need to have some confidence in ourselves and confidence in our systems. We need to constantly innovate. We need to believe in ourselves and our systems. Indeed, the task was not only enormous logistically, but also needed a lot of confidence building among the different development partners that this time around, the government will meet its part of the bargain. I'm representing uh, Against Malaria Foundation, one of the partners of the Ministry of Health, a National Malaria Control Program, that uh, contributed uh, 13 million nets uh, to this uh, activity or the campaign. And uh, one of the things that we really are very, very much critical on is the issue of accountability. I think it's one of our first values. We want to thank especially the PS, Dr. Diana, uh, Twinde, for giving us the confidence that, that something like this can be done locally and within our own structures. Our expectations in terms of accountability and delivery of nets were met at 100%. I personally did a job of tracking your communication from the SMS that is leaving the warehouse and the SMS that is receiving at the community. And then I go into another tool and then upload the nets that have been delivered versus the ones that have left, and then look at the matching. Now there's no in any way that I've found a discrepancy. Every time I would want to know what's happening, I would say an email dropping in from Michael about the status report. It used to come in at between 5 and 5.15, end of day. And immediately my boss in the UK will take that and, and share it with his colleagues. <laughs> Actually, at some point, I sent out a report, I think, for Web4. And they said, you mean there's no discrepancy? I said, yes, 100% left and then went deliver. This is its core and prestige the effort brought onto the country, rebuilding her image after the previous universal net coverage campaigns. For us to reach a time when Against Malaria Foundation can make a speech like the one they made today, it tells a lot. It means that a lot of confidence has come back out of this. Case. And uh, I think the program manager also talked about the experience before national medical schools coming in. Uh, at the start of the campaign, whenever we set off trucks to go to the sub counties, at night all the phones would go wild. So when this exercise was uh, handed over to NMS, I was very shocked because my phone was silent. Then I woke up in the morning and I saw text messages of what had been delivered somewhere. And we started calling around, and yeah, next had arrived. And uh, no one had called us for way bridge. No one had called us to clear trucks. Right? So it was a shock, but in a nice way. So there is something exceptional about your team, uh, General Manager, that we should like to appreciate and acknowledge that you are a talented team. They are very dedicated. They know their area. They know where to put our focus and how to get a result in that focus. So they are very good. And uh, I am very sure that these young men and ladies who joined you, now you've become part of the malaria fraternity, and I am very sure that you should be able to form a pool that uh, we should be able to tap into.
the representative from the other development partners described the monumental success as an act of extraordinary stewardship. I'm overwhelmed because what we are witnessing right now is a testimony of extraordinary stewardship. Stewardship in terms of being able to take on a task and actually delivering to the promise. We uh, certainly stand proud as a nation uh, who are able to share our experiences uh, with the others. Incidentally, I think it's about three or so months ago, I was at uh, NMS again to be part of uh, an event where another country, I think it was Malawi or Zambia, who are coming in to benchmark some of the activities to what we've been able to achieve uh, this side of town. So I congratulate you and uh, I believe that uh, this is uh, the best way forward. Amen. <laughs> Now, probably for the uh, stewards, especially at the NMS, a word of caution is that when you attain such a level of excellence, the challenge is keeping to that point and making sure you maintain that position of excellency. Behind the scenes of this success were the transporters. How did they pull off this gigantic exercise? Of reference for to transport 714,190 bells of hospital nets from uh, the NMS warehouses in Entebbe and to almost 2,000 destinations across the all sub counties of Uganda. First and foremost, we had a very good planning. We recruited personnel, trained them for about two weeks and we engaged the NMS as well to establish a joint working team based in Entebbe. And a week before the start of the project, we had to take vehicles to do a test load. So each truck would take its uh, required capacity to avoid the way bridge issues. And also, we had to dispatch our team to the field so that they can engage the stakeholders before we started moving. Then, uh, the, the use of apps and reporting in real time helped us uh, to execute this uh, huge, huge, huge task that was ahead of us. So, after loading, the driver will take a photo of him in front of the vehicle, and um, when we upload it on our app, we had a whole tracking team which were calling NMS clerks in the vehicles right from Ontario and uh, getting in touch as well with uh, our field teams who are receiving for these bills respectively. Then uh, also to support our tracking teams, we had to hire private security so that at every one time we would know where the trucks are and uh, how they are moving. And, uh, Whenever the wave ended, we would uh, come back to the drawing board and look at how did it go. Did it go well? Where do we improve? That's how we managed to pull it off and uh, to our satisfaction as well. We're also pleased with the results. Interesting and sounds like a smooth ride, Huntington. Did you encounter any challenges? Oh my God. Challenges were well, many. But uh, got us already ready and tested. Oh, uh, we're in the rainy season. We encountered a lot of rain, bridges washed away, floods, and bad roads as well. But because we had the advanced teams ahead, they always advise us the right roads possible, even as if that as it were, where trucks could maneuver and uh, reach. But of course, in some instances, uh, we had to flood and load. Like in Mayuge, we had to load more border borders on top of the canoes so that they can do final delivery. Um, what an experience in uh, when, where, a masquerader came with the trucks to receive bells for respective uh, sub county And he was ready to take the bells, and we only wanted to sign on the delivery notes. But our teams had already been in Queen seven days before, so they had interacted with all the people 
we were supposed to receive this bell, so you can imagine losing bells of a house of county to a masquerade. At the front line were the delivery clerks. They were selected in such a way that they represent all the districts of Uganda so they can easily relate with the local communities. In Buvuma district, we have nine sub-counties uh, and in the nine sub-counties, we are going to use boats uh, in seven sub-counties and with the two sub-counties, which I can easily be reached, we are going to use a ferry. We are six uh, delivery clerks. We are going to divide ourselves such that we can reach the nets to the specific uh, sub-counties that we are supposed to deliver the nets to. I have participated in all the six waves of the mosquito net distribution. As a delivery clerk, we go with the vehicles carrying bells to the sub-county and hand over staff to the sub-county administration. We had a dispatch tool for purposes of communication before leaving the warehouse and after delivering. This tool works on data and it is uh, an Android app. So using it, you enter the details of the journey. For example, to Kasese, we had 15,000 bells, and I was assigned a team of 13 people, each assigned specific sub-counties. All these clerks are entered into my system, and as soon as he brings back the paperwork, I have to enter real time. And every stakeholder will know that this person has dispatched or has delivered bells to the sub-county administration. Any challenges? Asese had been hit by floods, so we had to deliver to sub-counties that are on the other side of the river. There was no bridge constructed yet, so you have to strip off from the vehicle and you have to look for ways of carrying this bell via the water to the other side because the sub-county chief cannot sign your paper unless the bells reach his place. So. We had to engage all stakeholders, the RDC, we had to call the DHO. So we eventually succeeded because we got some people to come and help us. You, you, they cut on the head, then you pay them. Remember, you have to meet deadline. So in that process, you find you have to act fast. We've quite had some bad experiences too. I remember I went to a district and it would be so hard to get back to anyone who's at NMS in case I encountered a challenge. Whenever you try, you'd have to keep calling or you maybe have to wait till you get to a specific sub-county in order to reach them. And then the other was poor navigation. That's when we went to Kalangala. The, the lake was very turbulent. So uh, we had to trust the sailors at that moment because <laughs> it's you and God and them. So uh, we had to trust them when they said we have to remain uh, calm and we trust them. We had to do that and we had to wait for a few hours before we proceed to the specific sub-counties. Fiona, like many of her other colleagues, the campaign heightened not only their CVs but also the skills to interact with the people. From this project I, I have learned a lot. I have improved on my skills for starters. Uh, there had to be a lot of precision when doing this project. Your numbers had to be right, your timing had to be right, because people have other things to do. They cannot stay around and wait for you. So you have to be able to keep your time well. And then uh, this was a very interactive project. We had to work with a lot of people right from here at NMS up to the sub-county level. You'd find that you have interacted with so many different people. So we had to know how to communicate with these people so that we could successfully deliver our mosquito nets. The other thing that I have learned from this project is teamwork. We are a very big team of uh, delivery clerks. We were about 200 people and we had to work together to make sure that this project was a success. Then uh, also, if you have a CV that states that you actually worked and successfully completed a project with a, an organization like National Medical Stores, then it is something to be very proud of, and that is one of the biggest benefits I got from here. The general manager of National Medical Stores attributed the success to the holistic approach towards work where each of the key stakeholders did their part extremely well. This is a supply chain. And we succeeded because we ensured 
that none of us was ready to be the weakest link. From the people who are doing the procurement, the quantification even before the procurement happened, the people who made the ordering, the sequencing, the receipt, the warehousing, the delivery, the, uh, the issues of uh, NDA to do with quality, all of us held each other by the hand and it is because we did that, that's why we are able to deliver. Now that we have been able to achieve what we have achieved on this project, we can promise you that together we will develop a tool where when the net is received by a household, what gets in the tool is the mean number of that household. And you'll be able to track it through the system because the database is available. So we have the capacity, not just at NMS, we have the capacity in Ministry of Health, we have the capacity in Ministry of Health, we have the capacity in Uganda. Let us believe in ourselves. The permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, the architect behind empowering the local organizations, could not hold back her joy recalling the coiling journey they went through to convince the development partners that NMS was of age and had the attitude and competency to deliver to everyone's satisfaction. I want to thank NMS, General Manager Paul, and the entire team in National Medical Stores. We are so proud of you. We want to thank you that when we agreed to move this way, you are very quick to come on board, understand our strategy, and blend in. Now, coming back to our strategy to deliver the services to our people in a manner that builds confidence in our structures, in our funders, is the beginning of improving service delivery, and it is the beginning of building resilient systems. This record you have set also challenges us as uh, your mother institution. So to our staff in Ministry of Health, LLIN is just one event every two years, but we have other commodities. So if we start now and we work with NMS, we can develop a system to connect with our patient management system to account for our medicines properly so that it is just a click away and I'm able to know when these medicines were delivered to this facility, so much has been provided to the patients, so much is in the store. But if we are able to achieve that, we'll have achieved the biggest burden of the health sector. This campaign has shown us that it is possible. We must believe in ourselves.